Today we're going to be talking about solving compound and absolute value inequalities. And a compound inequality has more than one inequality in it. An and is when both of the inequalities are true. So you start at negative 4 and it's numbers greater than or equal to negative 4 and the numbers that are great or less than or equal to 3. So it's everything in between here. I think about it as this numbers that are sandwiched in between negative 4 and 3. And just so you guys know, interval notation for that would be something like this. So solving an and. Your variable is going to be sandwiched in between two numbers. So what we're going to do is if we add 2 to all of our inequalities, that's going to cancel that out. We're going to have 12 then I divide by 3 Oh, that less sign is just a less than sign. It's not a less than or equal to. So that I have my shading correctly. Okay, so units, I bet you we can go by one. Okay, so from four filled in all the way to 7 with an empty hole at 7. And again, just so you guys realize, interval notation, you would include the 4. These 7 would not be included, so that would be in parentheses. And then, just so that you realize, set builder notation is easy because it is basically just the inequality part with a part with this mathematical way of saying y such that y is between 4 and 7. Now an or means that one of them is true. So x is greater than 5 or x is less than 3. A lot of teachers like to think about them as like ors on the boat. They're going opposite directions. So solving an or inequality, you have x plus 3 less than 2, x is less than 1, negative 1, or, I need that or in there, I divide by negative 1, make sure that you switch the sign, or x is greater than 4. greater than 4, greater than or equal to, we would fill in our hole, and then x is less than negative 1, open hole, heading that way, and just so you guys realize, this written as interval notation would be negative infinity to negative 1, or I include 4, and then we never include infinity, so it gets a parenthesis. So that's solving compound inequalities. Just like we've been so solving normal inequalities, just you're going to have either an AND or an OR graph. Now, absolute value inequalities. I purposely spelled less than wrong because I have a way that we're going to remember it. Less than. As long as the absolute value piece is on the left hand side of your inequality, 
All you have to look at is what that inequality symbol is. Less than, remember what absolute value means. All the numbers whose distance from zero is less than two. So all numbers whose distance from zero is less than two. So it's everything in here. That's why this is an and, less than. So writing that as an inequality, we would write it like that. Now greater is an or statement. Again, the absolute value has to be on the left-hand side. So the numbers whose distance from zero is greater than three units. Well, that's everything less than negative three, so D has to be less than negative three, or anything greater than three, because all of these numbers, their distance from zero is greater than three. So, absolute value inequalities. What you have to remember, if it is in or statement, or a greater than sign. It changes into two separate or inequalities. One looking exactly like it looks. The other one you have to flip the sign because you made the C negative. So for an equation, or for an inequality, I apologize. For an inequality, you would have one looking exactly like it looks. The other one the seven becomes negative and you flip your inequality sign. For a less than sign, for a less than sign, it becomes an and. So remember, this is our shortcut for ands. That is standing for an and. What that means is ax plus b is less than c, so what it looks like, and ax plus b greater than negative c. So signs change and, be, and you become negative. So you just have to remember, greater becomes an or, less than becomes an and. And remember, this holds true if your inequality piece is on the left. Okay, so our first example is just like when we were solving absolute value equations. Isolate this absolute value piece. Subtract three from both sides. two, I multiply by two. Now we have two separate inequalities. Remember, look at what this symbol is. It's a greater than sign, so it becomes an or statement. So two x minus two greater than or equal to four, or 2x minus 2, switch your sign, make the 4 negative. Now, it's just a matter of solving. 2x minus 2, greater than or equal to 4. Let's add 2 to both sides and divide by 2. I add two, now make sure you write or in there. I'm not going to mark it completely correct if you don't have that or written in there because I want you to recognize whether it's an and or an or statement. So I am greater than three or less than negative one. So I'm going to go by ones.
I am less than or equal to negative 1. I'm greater than or equal to 3. So our or is on the boat. To prepare for a job interview, Hinda researches the position's requirements and pay. She discovers that the average starting salary for the position is $38,500, but her actual salary could differ from the average from the average by as much as $2,450. dollars I knew I'd get it right. Okay, so her actual salary could differ from the average. So X let X be her her actual salary. So her starting salary, the starting salary could differ from her actual salary by as much as twenty two thousand four hundred fifty dollars. By as much as. As much as is a less than or equal to sign. Because by as much as means this one's going to be bigger. So now, since this is a less than, it becomes an and statement. I'm going to subtract 38,500 keep that negative with the X we're going to deal with that in a minute now I divide by a negative 1 making sure I switch the signs Now, weird picky thing of mine. This makes math teachers cringe. When you're writing an and statement, you always have the smallest number less than or equal to x, less than or equal to the larger number. So, this is our absolute value inequality. It doesn't say to solve, but I went ahead and solved anyway that's the range that her salary could be in. Okay, write an absolute value inequality for each graph. So our first one, think about what we did in the last problem. Okay, so I'm going to have absolute value inequality. This is an and statement, so it's going to be a less than or equal to sign x minus something is less than or equal to something. In the last example, we talked about her average starting salary. So find the average between negative 4 and 2. The average between negative 4 and 2, the middle number, or the midpoint, is negative 1. The midpoint is the number that goes in here, so that's going to be plus 1. Less than or equal to Remember, that means distance. What's this distance? The distance is three units. The distance between x and some number negative one, when you subtract them, their difference is going to be less than or equal to three. This is an, the bottom one b is an or. So it's greater than, not equal to, So what's the middle number between 3 and 0? Well, that's negative 3 halves. Or right there. Now we need to figure out what's from that value to either one of the endpoints. 
or half the length of that whole segment that's not shaded in. Well, the distance from negative 3 halves to negative 3 or negative 3 halves to 0 is 3 halves. Okay, here are your lesson questions. Please make sure the answers to these and the Google form are submitted on time.